Okay, hey, thank, thank you very much, um, Vania. Um, is my audible, my audio clear? Great, thank you. Okay, hi everyone. My name is McDonald Tawanda Chirara and I'm from Zimbabwe. Currently, I am doing my high school final year at the African Leadership Academy in South Africa, and also I'm doing leadership and entrepreneurial studies. So today I'm going to be talking about the future of renewable energy expansion in rural and sub-Saharan Africa. So today I'm also going to take you along my journey, a journey I couldn't control, but um, however could manage to maneuver. So. Right now, over 60% of the sub-Saharan Africa rural households are still using firewood as their main source of cooking energy. So this actually presents a unique opportunity to create or build a sustainable energy system almost from scratch. But the question is, how do you do that? So, I grew up in an urban community and sometimes used to go to the rural areas to spend my vacations with my grandmother. I noticed a very big difference between the two communities and concluded that life was rather a bit difficult in, in the rural areas because most of the basic needs in rural areas are met with difficulty and um, the phenomenon just remains the same looking at sub-Saharan Africa at large. Um, these difficulties um, include access to renewable energy and access to electricity. So the key distinction to be made um, between access of, uh, between the rural areas and urban areas in terms of access to electricity is that in um, rural areas, it is often um, the problem of electricity delivery infrastructure, there's lack of um, grid connectivity. So today, electrification on average has reached about 80% in urban areas, and most rural areas are still lagging behind at only 20%. So what really concerned me most was the rate of deforestation and the continuous use of um, firewood. Um, when I used to go to the rural areas, sometimes I, I encountered the challenges wrought by looking for firewood um, in the bushes. So I imagined how this system is moving from generation to generation, though to most of the rural people, like my grandmother, cooking with firewood, it's now, some, it's now a norm. It's now something that is usual. And in most of the, com the, the community or in the neighborhood, everyone will be just cooking with firewood. And it's now something which is um, just usual. But yet as um, firewood is burning across the continent, black carbon and smoke are speeding up um, the global climate change. And they are also as, in, as causing serious health problems and in a cause of the ongoing environmental degradation, which is being noticed in different parts of um, Africa. So I really wanted to do something regarding to this energy problem. But um, as a student at a public school, I had limited resources availed to me. So it was inherently difficult. And also, I was more relaxed or reluctant to, to work on a solution or to think about um, the energy crisis. So there was a unique, fortunately, there was a unique opportunity which was um, brought up by the Zimbabwe Science Fair. So they created a competition whereby students could submit solutions to problems being faced in their communities. So as someone who was already thinking of a problem, I saw it as a, as a unique opportunity since almost 50% of the submission, I already had it in mind. I was already thinking of the energy crisis. So I thought that let me submit um, my, my, my proposal to this competition. So since I had the problem, the, I now wanted to look on um, options for a solution. What could we do to solve this energy crisis or what contribution could I make to this energy crisis being faced in rural areas? 
So I started researching on the existing sources of renewable energy, which are present. So I firstly looked at um, solar systems because I saw that um, in most sub-Saharan Africa, we have an abundance of sunlight. So solar systems or solar options could be possibly a viable option for rural areas. Why, why are people still cooking with firewood yet um, they, they are solar systems? So from my research, I realized that most of the solar systems are relatively expensive for most um, rural households because to buy um, setups such as the inverter or the, the battery or the, even the panels themselves, it's a very expensive system. Where's more if you want to power up an electrical stove? So people would rather resolve to use the firewood cook stoves. I then started looking if there was another possible um, cheaper or affordable way people can generate sustainable energy for cooking. So I then started looking at biogas. So as I was looking at biogas, I saw it as a simple, old and established technology. So with biogas, you only need your organic waste, put it in anaerobic conditions, then you get your sustainable energy. So I started again doing the same process, like why are people not using biogas um, and they are still using firewood? So from my research, I realized that most of the biogas systems that we have um, are an old and established technology. Most of them, they have long retention time. So it takes um, two to four weeks to, to, to produce gas and they require a large um, size of land for construction. And also they require um, more waste in terms of input. So again, people would rather opt to um, simple firewood cook stoves. So I started um, focusing my research on, since I saw biogas as, as a viable option, which just needs um, more um, innovation to, to improve the, the, the process or to, to enhance the, the efficiency of um, most biogas systems. And also people tend to associate biogas digesters with smelly conditions. So I said, let me start working on ways we can refine and increase the efficiency of um, biogas digesters. So I started focusing my research on the efficiency of biogas systems and also countering the, the drawbacks of the current systems which are existing. So um, from my research, uh, I, I, I came across the water hyacinth plants. So water hyacinth plants are a sort of invasive plant species in, in most sub-Saharan African countries. So through my research and um, experiments, consultations with different mentors and, and teachers, I managed to discover that the fibrous root system of the water hyacinth plants um, harbors microbes and also enzymes which increase biogas production. So they allow biogas to be produced in shorter cycle and also um, because of the number of active anaerobic microbes, um, they convert the organic matter to biogas much faster. Um, so if that, if that um, inoculation is implemented in a biogas digester system, there will be the reactor stability is going to be improved and also it will allow to um, the construction or the design of a much smaller and efficient biogas system. So um, the, findings, the findings from the research prove that the combined inoculation from different sources um, can actually represent an efficient and an, if, an, if, an efficient solution for anaerobic digestion. So, I started thinking, um, since now we have solved the efficiency part, what more or what else can people do with biogas? So I started looking on alternative ways people use biogas for. So currently biogas is being used to generate electricity, but this, this is being done on a very large scale. So the biogas is being used to heat water, the water turns into steam, the steam um, turns the turbines and the generator, basically the thermal process. And also there, are, I, there is another option of biogas um, generators, but these are also in expensive, these are expensive infrastructure or expensive setups. I wanted a system that could be used maybe, let's say 
at the backyard of my, my, my grandmother in rural areas, a system which was um, affordable, a system which was um, smart, at the same time simple to use, not complicated. So I started um, researching on ways we can use biogas to generate electricity without any mechanical moving parts, um, and also with high efficiency. So I started focusing my research on um, uh, the thermoelectric um, pr principle. So basically the thermoelectric principle is when um, you heat and cool a semiconductor simultaneously, a potential difference is um, created um, resulting in electricity. So basically thermoelectric um, generators, for instance, the one which is being shown on the screen, they are more like um, a plate set up, they, they, they are a plate and in between the plates, they are semiconductor blocks, the P-type and the N-type. So, so I, I, I designed a system whereby the lower part of the thermoelectric um, generator was heated with the, um, the heat which is coming from the biogas cook stove and the upper part is being cooled by a water cooling system I had um, designed. So um, this eventually led to the designing of a biogas cook stove, which comprised of an um, auto air injection system, a water cooling system, a DC to DC booster, and also the thermoelectric generators. So um, this allowed a system whereby a, a, a prototype of a system which only required organic waste and you could get um, your cooking gas at the same time, electricity to power up small electrical appliances such as um, lights and charging cell phones. So the prototype, who, the final prototype had a maximum wattage of 50 watts. So through the, through the Zimbabwe Science Fair, I had the opportunity to present the project and um, the prototypes at different science fairs and forums um, in different parts of the world. And at the same time, I was getting the opportunity to collaborate with different innovators um, and also scientists who were providing feedback on how best we could improve um, the system. So um, in efforts also to, to make impact, to take the, 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 the project or the science research to the world, I connected with other young people who had a similar mission and also a similar vision. So we had to go back to the drawing board and start brainstorming on, on, the, on the prototype of the, the waste powered electricity generator I had been working on. So um, this marked the birth of everlasting technology. So everlasting technology is a social enterprise which mainly focuses on renewable energy innovations for rural communities and also um, last mile communities. So as everlasting technology, um, we are currently working on developing our system. We are still working on the prototype. So um, as I have mentioned before, this unit will allow households um, to directly convert their organic waste to cooking gas. So as so when the organic waste is pr processed to biogas, um, the biogas cook stove will be redirecting the heat energy released to the, to the thermal system. And that's how the electricity part will be, um, will be generated. So um, fortunately, recent progress also suggests that it's now possible um, to supply alternative sources of energy to those in need. And in doing so, addressing um, climate change, addressing deforestation, and also addressing health concerns. So with the support of the SNV Netherlands development in Zimbabwe, we managed to receive grants and we have managed to reach, to reach to around 100 rural households um, for the implementation stage. So Africa as a continent clearly needs to contribute to mitigating the impacts of um, climate change. And um, key, to, key to this transition, especially in the rural sub-Saharan Africa, are uh, researches and also research and development on affordable clean energy innovations. And also there is need to work on policies by governments and different organizations which facilitate clean energy availability. 
Um, there is also need to decentralize clean energy infrastructure. For instance, working on, uh, um, since, since I've mentioned that grid connectivity is a main um, problem hindering access of electricity in rural areas. So we can now start working on decentralized electrical um, power systems or clean energy um, systems. So working on this energy transaction, this energy tra transition can allow an prom promising economic development since um, avenues such as um, the education can be further broadened. We will now be having e-learning facilities in rural schools, um, IT infrastructure, and also connectivity of, um, uh, 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 of farmers. They'll be able to, for instance, look at the real-time market price of their agricultural pr produce. So this overall or this in turn will allow economic um, development. So um, in conclusion, the future of um, the renewable energy in Africa is the solution to address poverty and also at the same time jumpstart efforts to accelerate economic activity. So um, this is going to be a worthwhile investment option that will come with a very, very important bonus. And this is clean energy that will not, um, that will not contribute to environmental degradation and also not contribute to um, global climate change. So with this, I would like to thank you and I welcome to work on any collaborations or any mentorship opportunities as this is still a journey I'm working on um, to provide and contribute in um, having clean energy for all, especially in those um, last mile communities. Thank you. Great, thank you for sharing. It's very interesting to hear your journey to kind of from research and curiosity into developing a full-fledged organization. Very, very exciting. Um, we do have a couple questions. Um, so someone asked, they noticed that this innovative prototype looks very interesting. How much is the cost advantage of using biogas plus thermoelectric compared to a system like solar panel? Okay. So basically solar panel there's more wattage required to, because here I was looking on trying to solve the issue of firewood cookstoves, because most people were using um, um, firewood um, for their cookstoves. So I was trying to find something which can eradicate um, uh, the use of firewood. So solar panels too, you have electrical stoves which are powered by um, solar panels. There, there is a high wattage which is required, like more power is required. But from biogas, the first stage biogas will allow um, a smooth, like a smooth energy transition because from waste to biogas, that transition is affordable and cheap using the system. Then the electricity part, it's from the thermoelectric um, generators, it's, it's going to be um, affordable because we will just be requiring the electricity for house lighting and charging cell phones. But in terms of the cooking part, we are using biogas. So, so since thermoelectric generators in terms of cost, they are more um, competing with um, solar panel systems, they won't, they, they, their only use in the prototype or in the system is going to be on the lighting side or small appliance side and on the cooking side we still have um biogas great that's helpful thank you um we also have another question what challenges have you faced in developing and distributing your innovation in zimbabwe okay so um one of the major challenge in um, a country a developing country like zimbabwe is access to to resources sometimes um the resources you need to conduct your experiments they are not uh, available locally and you need to import them from other countries and that comes with high costs and especially if it's still an early stage idea it's very difficult to, to, to secure funds or to secure grants, um, to secure research grants. And also, if you are not um, at an advanced tertiary education level, it's much worse. 
So that's that was one of the major problem I was facing um, during the, the, the project. Uh, I think just one more question. Um, you mentioned that we need more kind of innovation and policies to support changes like these. What would you, if you had the power to, what would you change in terms of policy that could spur investment in kind of innovative technologies and also efforts like people like yourself who are really trying to make a difference? Okay, so for the policies, um, I think I, I, I would um, redirect um, more more funds to be invested to create policies which facilitate more funds to be channeled towards um, research, especially in um, in developing countries. I think it's one of the major drawback or, 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 or a major gap which is required. That's good to know. Great, thank you so much for your presentation. Very interesting to hear about your innovation and kind of the opportunities to kind of scale up renewables in um, Zimbabwe and South Africa in general. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vanya, for the opportunity. Yeah, great. Um, so. So our next speaker um, will be shedding light on one of the most talked about trends these days. And no, it's not TikTok, but it's uh, machine learning. Uh, Priya Dante is a PhD student um, studying computer science and public policy at CMU Carnegie Mellon University. Um, her work focuses a lot on the intersection of machine learning and the electric power system. Um, she's co-founder and chair of Climate Change AI, an initiative to facilitate impactful work at the intersection of uh, those two uh, topics. Um, and she's going to speak about the role of machine learning in creating a greener future. Um, so please welcome Priya and you should be able to share your screen. You're in. You're also on mute. 